Today we're going to be going over the five things that you need to start real estate photography. What's up guys, my name is Nehemiah Peterson and I am a real estate photographer from Burlington, Wisconsin. And today we are going to go over the five things that you need to start real estate photography. The first thing that you're gonna need is a professional camera and definitely one that shoots in raw format. When it comes to portraits, landscapes, and other types of photography, you can usually get away with learning on JPEG, but not with real estate. The reason that RAW format is so important is because RAW gives you the most dynamic range or the most latitude from your darkest blacks all the way up to your brightest whites. Why this is so important is because when you're shooting inside of a home, you don't know how it's going to be lit and you want to make sure that the darkest parts of the image and the brightest parts of the image are properly exposed. You're going to be able to tweak your exposure, your highlights, your whites, your blacks, and your shadows all individually within your editing software if you shoot in RAW format, but if you shoot in JPEG, you are going to get significantly less ability to tweak those things. Also, just straight out of camera, you're going to get more dynamic range out of a RAW image than out of a JPEG. The second thing that you're going to need is a tripod. This is one where you can more so get away with a beginner level of one, but I would recommend as sturdy of a tripod as you can afford. A tripod is important because when it comes to real estate, you are more often than not going to have your shutter open to anywhere from 1 30th of a second to maybe even sometimes five seconds long, depending on how dark the room is that you're taking a picture of. If you try to take a picture handheld with a five second long exposure, you are very likely, well, I would say indefinitely, going to get a shaky image with blur and you don't want that when it comes to taking pictures of a home. You want the sharpest image possible and that is only going to happen if you are mounted on a tripod, especially if you're taking your picture at something longer than 1 30th of a second. You might be thinking, why can't I just take the picture at a wider aperture of say 1.4? And the reason for that is that when you are taking pictures of a home, you want every single thing in the room to be in focus. So more often than not, you are going to be shooting at apertures of 5.6 and up. This could be its own video, but the point is, tip number two, get yourself a good tripod. The third thing that you're going to need to shoot real estate photography is a proper editing software. You can definitely edit your photos a little bit in apps like Photos for Mac users, and there's plenty of other free editing softwares out there, but if you wanna get the most latitude out of your raw images, you're gonna want something like Adobe Lightroom or Capture One. You can get both of these softwares for as low as $10 a month, and with Adobe, you can actually get a package of $10 a month for not only Lightroom, but Photoshop as well, all for a total of $10 a month. If you guys would like to see a separate video on how I edit my real... If you guys would like to see a separate video breakdown of how I edit my real estate photos, let me know in the comments below and we will make that happen. But make sure you get a good editing software. Like I said, I personally recommend Adobe Lightroom and Capture One. The fourth thing that you're gonna need is HDR. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. This allows you to, once again, get as much out of your deepest blacks all the way to your brightest whites as possible. Some cameras come in with built-in HDR modes, and some do not. The ones that are more beginner level do not usually come with it. So right now we're gonna go over HDR for cameras that have it and cameras that don't. HDR isn't like a piece of equipment. You don't actually buy it. It's more of a process that you do. For cameras that do not have an HDR mode, what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to set up your shot on your tripod exactly how you want it to be. Take the picture at the proper exposure. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take the picture again at one stop underexposed. Then what you're going to do is take the picture again a third time at one stop overexposed. Once you have taken all three pictures, you're able to bring them into your editing software, highlight all three of them, right click, and then find Photo Merge. 
What this is going to do is it's going to merge all three images. And since you have one image that is properly exposed, one image that is underexposed, and one image that is overexposed, you are going to get from the properly exposed image all of the properly lit midtones, from the overexposed image all of the properly lit shadows and dark places, and from the underexposed image all of the properly lit highlights and bright areas. This will give you a perfectly exposed image from top to bottom when it comes to your brightest whites all the way to your darkest blacks. You're going to want to do this for every single shot that you take inside and outside of a property to give you the best dynamic range possible on every image. And yes, you still need to shoot in RAW if you're going to do HDR. RAW and HDR, both necessary for every single image that you take. And this is why I was actually going to put patience for one of the things that you need because HDR in this way does take a lot of extra time, but you're going to get the best results out of your image unless you use flash, which I don't, but that's a completely different style. Some cameras have HDR built in and this is amazing and I personally think that if you are going to do real estate full time, it is 100% worth it to, even if you have a camera already, get a camera, invest in a camera, maybe even sell the camera that you currently have to buy a camera that has internal HDR. This saves me over an hour sometimes per property. So I, I personally think that in editing and in shooting, the time that you save, it is worth it to buy a camera that has internal HDR. What internal HDR does is that once you set up your shot, once you set up your proper exposure, and once you put it on a tripod, it will actually take the three images for you in a burst. It will take one image at the exposure you set, one image one stop above what you set, and one image below a stop that you set, and it will merge all three of them, all within about a five to 10 second time, depending on how new and fast your camera is. This way, when you bring it into your editing software, you don't have to photo merge any of your photos. The photos have already been merged into one raw file, and you are able to do your tweaks from there with a ton more dynamic range than if it were just a normal single capture taken. Once again, if you guys want to see a full breakdown video on just HDR alone, I can do that. Leave a comment below and let me know if that's something that you're interested in. The fifth thing that you need to shoot proper real estate photography is a wide angle lens. This is potentially the most important thing that you are going to need in order to take proper real estate photography. The reason for that is when you are shooting a property or more specifically a room, you wanna get as much of that room in your photo as possible. I know that wide angle lenses are a piece of equipment that can get really pricey. However, the reason for that price tag is usually having a good zoom range, having silent autofocus, stuff like that, that you don't really need when it comes to real estate video. You're going to be shooting in manual focus anyway. You are going to not really need a silent autofocus because manual focus, and you're going to be putting music over your footage as well. So that being said, you just wanna make sure that you have a wide enough angle lens. The sweet spot for crop sensor cameras is anywhere from a nine millimeter to an 11 millimeter lens. And the sweet spot for full frame is anywhere from 15 millimeters to say maybe 18 millimeters is probably the tightest I would go. You don't wanna go any tighter than that because you wanna make sure you get as much of the room as possible, but you also don't wanna make sure that you go any wider than that. There is a such thing as too wide, because if you go wider, you're gonna start to get really bad vignetting. You might even get as bad as fisheye, which is really bad for real estate. And you're also gonna start to get really bad distortion if you go any wider than that. So make sure you stay within that sweet spot. Again, crop sensor, anywhere from nine millimeters to 11 millimeters. If you're on a full frame camera, anywhere from probably 15 to 18. I would even say 18 is kind of pushing it. You should probably stay that 16 millimeter is kind of the sweet spot for full frame. So make sure you get a wide angle lens. And another plus is that most of these wide angle lenses, you're gonna be able to vlog on as well. So if you've already been thinking about doing that as well, you'll have a lens that covers real estate and it covers vlogging. That's what I do with this lens and it's pretty awesome. Also, in case you're wondering, I personally use the Fujifilm 10 to 24 millimeter F4 lens. I think it's awesome. It has very quiet autofocus. It also is wide enough for real estate. So, solid. 
But that's pretty much it for me, guys. Those are my five things that you need in order to start taking real estate photos. I myself have been doing this for about a year now, and I am happy to say that I am very confident when it comes to taking professional real estate photography. Let me know in the comments below if you liked and benefited at all from this video. Please do leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. I am so excited for the community that we are building here. We recently just hit 200 subscribers and I am so thankful to each and every one of you who have subscribed and who are commenting and taking part in this community. I appreciate you all very much and I will see you in the next video.